Oh yeah. Oh man, I love this. A shout out to Ron Oliver. Man, this is the perfect way to wake up on a Saturday morning. Good Saturday morning, friends. Mark Holmes here with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo, as well as Joe Bear. He's back at the house. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Hope everybody's having a great weekend. We are getting ready for the Dallas Cowboys to take on the New York Stink and Giants. And, you know, it doesn't matter what I say. Uh, you know what? I, let me first start off here as my music dies out. Let me first start out here by giving a warm and uh, gracious... I think that's the right way to say it. Let me say thank you to all of you veterans, all of you veterans, because you know what? In this day and age and in this world, last night was a terrible night. Last night, I, I don't know what was wrong with me. I, I guess it was exhaustion and all that. And, you know, there's a bunch of people out there that are just there just to cause trouble. The world is a different place than what I grew up with and what I expect for us. Unfortunately, it is the world that we have. But on a day like today, when you have people who are giving so much for each and every one of us, even for you trolls out there to be assholes, that's what the veterans are doing. Some have paid the ultimate price. This hat right here for my buddy, Daniel Hernandez incredible friend a friend who's going to be moving away in a few uh, months that i will truly miss he is a great individual stand out stand up a guy who will be there for you an incredible rv driver a guy who has given it all for each and every one of you and the thing is he's not the only one there's millions of you out there that are just like Daniel Hernandez. And from the bottom of my heart, I say thank you. I appreciate you. And it needs to be more than just today. And I salute you. You know, and that brings me to actually the thoughts and stuff today. Like I said last night, it was, I just, my mind was just blank. I, I think I have been... The football season, me and my wife, we said, you know, we want to get this place together. Mm -hmm. And we said the time to do it was going to be the off season, as soon as the season ended. And we started right after the Super Bowl on the house. You know, I have done many, many homes before where we've gone through, you know, gutted it out, put in new electrical plumbing, you know, slap some insulation in there, drywall and new flooring and stuff. Boom. And, you know, it's done. It's out. It's rented or sold or whatever. But a place like this, the scope and the amount of work and the amount of time and the amount of detail that has had to go into this um, has just been immense. It has been hard it's been expensive it's been time consuming but it also has brought out more passion for me personally you know i feel like there's something in the world that each of us are supposed to do and this is going to sound crazy but everything that i've done in my life all of the lessons that i've learned all the different jobs that i've done all of those things have all pointed to doing this place and i don't know if i'm possessed if it's the spirits or whatever or the the home itself i get here and it doesn't feel like a job but i never want to stop i have gone through and i have done live streams here and finished at 10 10 30 at night and then have gone back to doing more and more work in here and i think last night um, because we're doing a big push because I'm proud of what we do. Uh, people come through and they say, man, this place looks incredible. It makes me want to do more. And I think it just pure exhaustion happened last night. And it was just like, I was very agitated, but more than anything else, I was just, I just can't, I just couldn't function. 
And of course, trolls smell blood in the water. And oh, they're jumping. Oh, he's, you know, he's just not taking it because he can dish it out. And, and you know, it's, the, it's not to do with the eagles. Eagles. But I realize because this morning, when I woke up this morning, thank God I did, I ended up getting a message this morning. Hey, buddy, you've been busting your hump, getting that house done, doing multiple videos a day, giving us great content, but you need some time to relax. The house will get done. Forget the trolls. They ain't worth it. Go birds. That's my buddy, AJ, who had been in the hospital for several weeks or maybe even several months with melanoma, who got to ring the bell a few weeks ago and is back home and doing so much better. An Eagle fan of mine, you Eagle fan, who, by the way, is worried about me. And that's where it just start this whole thing. And as I think about this channel and you guys, I think about the Daniel Hernandez, who I met because of this channel, and I look at this hat every day that I'm sitting here. I think about the Queen Bellas that, that sent me the raid that I need for you eagle-ass trolls and things. I think about so many great people that because of this madness that is the internet with all of the assholes that are out there for every asshole there's a hundred good people and I woke up this morning and I remembered that and it made me feel so much better and so much more energized so I have to say thank you this morning to an Eagle fan AJ because you turned everything completely around. And now, turning things around. The thing I realize more than anything, sometimes you can make the perfect argument. You can actually have proof of what you're saying. And it doesn't matter. Because an ass is an ass. They're going to be an ass regardless. If you are... Still saying Dak Prescott turnover machine, pick Dak. Then you're not even a fan of football. You don't even have a clue as to what's going on in football. If you're still saying dink and dunk Dak, you don't watch football. You know nothing, nothing. The reality is. That may be your perception because you don't actually watch football. You may not actually understand football. Now, the thing, and this goes for not just the hater trolls that are out there for the Giants or the Eagles or the Commanders. This goes for some Cowboy fans as well. <coughs> Excuse me. You can say what you want. Dak's not the one. He's not good enough and things like that. But here's kind of interesting thing. As we look at guys like Josh Allen, we keep getting told things like great quarterbacks put the team on their shoulder and elevate them to win, that you don't have to have pieces around you. It's just the quarterback. You know, they say that Justin Herbert is incredible. They say that, you know, Josh Allen is the cover boy for Madden. It's beginning to look like it's possible Buffalo doesn't make the playoffs. The cover boy for Madden, mind you, in the playoffs at home, only put up 10 points in the playoffs last year. The same weekend that we lost on the road to San Francisco after having a short week playing on the road in Tampa Bay on Monday night. The difference being Dak is trash. Josh Allen is the cover boy. The year, the last year that Aaron Rodgers one MVP, he had 36 TDs, mind you, the exact same numbers that Dak Prescott had in TD passes, was the number one seed in the NFL 
and they lost to the same San Francisco team that we lost to the week before. That we hurt Jimmy G, softened them up, and they played at home on the frozen tundra against a team that's not used to cold weather. And people would say, oh, well, the weather was bad. It was cold in Green Bay. Bro, it's always cold in Green Bay. It's cold or colder. That, that, that's a, we were there in October, or excuse me, in, in for, excuse me, not October, in September for an NFL kickoff there, and it was only like 70 degrees then, in September. So here's where it's kind of crazy as we keep hearing constantly, Dak, 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 Dak sucks. Even the talking heads or the shows if you go through on the ratings because see people are sitting here you know with, with Micah Parsons who's become the conscience and the, the the guy who at least is trying to set the record straight in the NFL says that Dak Prescott should be in the conversation for MVP now if we go through Marcus Mosher you know he posted this uh, basically looking at all of the rankings of quarterbacks from different publications and media so Pro Football Network, okay, says Dak is rated third. Okay. 33rd team. I don't know what 33rd team, I hadn't heard that, but they're ranking him at six. NFL Media ranking him at six. The Ringer ranking him at eight. CBS Sports ranking him at eight. Pro Football Focus, because, you know, skip, skip, skip. You know the boys at Pro Football Focus, they watch a lot of football. They have them at the lowest, and that's ninth. But here it is. The perception you would think is Dak Prescott is the worst quarterback in football. If the pundits out there that don't like Dak and are always trashing him still all have him in the top 10 from three to nine, he's got to be somewhere in that range. If you end up taking the average, okay, then that's six. Depending on what you use, mean, median, mode, or modulation, you know, uh, or you can go average, you know, it, it still comes out to about six. You can take away the highest one and say that's an outlier. You can take out the lowest one, okay, because that could be an outlier. But then you got two sixes and two eights, so that puts them at seven. And so the question begs is, if he's seventh rated right now after the first game, which was a 40-burger, and the offense already had 14 points before they even got on the field if against the Jets which was a great defense again <clears throat> we settled for field goals instead of trying to get scores if the first half of the season Mike McCarthy was throttling Dak Prescott he's finally turned him loose the last three games if his moves and his you know ability where he's number one on third and fourth down in completion percentage and ranking and steadily moving up it's conceivable that he should be in the top five by the end of the season if things continue to go in the same way. That's not to say that they will, but you can see after CeeDee Lamb kind of, you know, we're wondering what's going on with CeeDee Lamb. CeeDee Lamb now is the top five. You know, you start to see now Jake Ferguson starting to look like a really good NFL tight end. Maybe the next one will be Brandon Cooks. Or maybe it'll end up being Jalen Tolbert, who's got the highest success rate on the team. <coughs> Forgive me, Sandy Flores got all this dust. Maybe he's inserted more and he ends up helping to elevate the team. And as you play these teams like the Giants, uh, the Panthers, the Commanders and things, that all of a sudden, those numbers, of course, will be skewed even higher because they're not as good a teams as, say, the Buffaloes and the Miamis and the Lions that you're going to be facing in Seattle down the road. Because it's all an average. You're going to have some games that you're playing against trash teams. You're going to get great numbers. You have some games when you're playing against great teams and your numbers are going to be down. But as you go through the course of the season, it is conceivable. And the final point on this is, if you literally have a top 10 quarterback, a top 10 quarterback, why are you getting rid of a top 10 quarterback? Or why do you want to get rid of a top 10 quarterback? Because the problem of this is, is top 10 quarterbacks don't grow in trees. 
There's only 10 of them in the world. In the world. How do you think that you're going to just get a better one? I've seen the Jets say, let's go get Aaron freaking Rodgers, who still is not playing now. I've seen teams that say, hey, let's trade for a Carson Wentz. That'll be better than what we have. And I think he just re-signed with somebody with San Francisco. Was it San Francisco? No. Oh, the Rams. You could make moves and say, you know, Matthew Stafford, who really, it was a one-year wonder. Or you might draft somebody and say, you know, we got Justin Herbert, who's generational, but your coach is probably going to be fired. If not before the end of the season, at the end of the season. Hmm. Oh, I forgot. There's Trey Lance, of course. Everybody figures that he's going to be the guy. And until proven so, we'll have to wait and see. So I'm going to end this morning with a uh, final few thoughts here <clears throat> ESPN last night is the NFC East race over some people have been coming to me and saying the Cowboys they ain't gonna make the playoffs let's listen in on this so let's give Dallas a win this weekend and you see the Eagles have a bye Look at the upcoming schedule for these two top teams in the NFC East. They've got, the Eagles have tough games coming up. Their opponents have a combined winning record of 22 and 12. The Cowboys' upcoming opponents are under 500. And then, of course, those teams meet again in week 14. So the question, Dan Graziano, is this. Can the Cowboys catch the Eagles and still win the NFC East despite last weekend's loss? Of course they can. And in fact, last weekend's loss should <coughs> sort of embolden them because it came down to the wire. It was in Philadelphia. And Dallas comes out of that game feeling like, yeah, if we meet again, when we meet again, we can play with these guys and we can beat them. So, uh, yes, the, the, the way those get look. Philadelphia's schedule's tough. Philadelphia's a really good team. They could beat all those teams, and then we're not even having this conversation. But it does look much more difficult than what Dallas has lined up, and if it goes badly for Philly in those first couple of games out of its bye, then we could have a situation where they have the same record or very close to it by the time they meet again in early December. Right, look, so barring something really unexpected against the Giants, the Cowboys will be two games behind the Eagles when we all wake up Monday morning and then we see how the schedule plays out. Can they catch Philly this year and win the division, Bart? Uh, I don't think they can catch Philly because you think about Philadelphia being a good team, Hater. a good team split with other good teams. So even if they you know, lose some of those games, I think they have a big enough lead and it's going to come down maybe potentially to the final game of the season. And if it comes down to the final game of the season, I think Philadelphia will find a way to figure it out. Greeny, they don't win the division, but you made a great point earlier in the week when you said of the 106 players, Dak Prescott was the best player. I agree with that. I think they could go back to Philly in the playoffs and win. Mm -hmm. and when you look at how good Dak Pres Prescott's playing, third in the league in completion percentage, and six different Cowboys have 15 <coughs> or more receptions. I think this offense is different than last year. I think it's a little bit more efficient. So I don't think they win the division, but I think they can win the war. See, but the problem that they're going to run into is they don't have any physicality, and that's what wins in the playoffs. You have to be able to run the football and get those tough yards. They are missing Ezekiel Elliott, and that's going to be a problem when it gets to the playoffs. The problem they're going to have is that in, in order to get back to Philadelphia, they probably will have to beat San Francisco. Yeah. Right. And styles make fights, right? The yeah. Cowboys play the Eagles tough. That. They don't play the Niners yeah. tough. It's a right. problem. <laughs> Look, I... I <laughs> been 18 years since the same team won the NFC East and back to back. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Let's see it before we crown the Eagles. Well, that's one way to look at it. I'll give you a matchup. There you go. We'll see what we're going to see. As always, you know I appreciate you guys, man. And thank you, veterans, one more time. And thank you, great fans that I do have because you guys, you guys keep me motivated. You guys keep me on track. And I will be back at the Man Cave for our 5 o'clock live stream. Peace.